you know, after uh, last week's video, and I've been trying to make these a lot quicker when I review Kaminari Geats, but man, when they give us this much information in an episode, I'm like, how am I supposed to cut put this back? How am I supposed to not make this a long video? Because there's so much stuff to talk about. So much stuff is going on. We finally got our character growth from K1 and even Neon, given how they've been the last couple episodes. And more stuff about the sponsors and everything else and a, like two big like kind of like reveal cliffhangers at the end of the episode and i was like there's too much going on i don't know how i'm gonna talk about this and not make it a long video so um you know i'm gonna give so i'm not gonna be going over every minute detail of this episode okay this isn't gonna be a complete play-by-play -play. this is just key elements and things that i found entertaining and then stuff that i can like kind of test my, my theories of what's going on with so obviously at the end of the last episode we find out we're going into the dgp playoffs and garori explains what the playoffs are and it's a fox hunt and obviously we're continuing the dynamic between sumri and garori where basically she's just like this is violation this is a violation of the rules but he cuts her off like and we actually go into just a regular like geats logo splash image we don't get the op i'm like oh and basically we're told whoever win whoever defeats geats is the winner that's it that's how you win that's how you get your wish and my favorite thing in this whole entire episode is constantly Grory is just gaslighting the shit out of kawa like every moment he can just trying to hype him up to believe he could beat geats and even you know kawa questions him because he's like the dgp was supposed to be about saving people in this world and why do the riders have to fight each other and you know glory like he's just not he's not gonna answer he's just he's just like like i said he's gaslighting him he's just like it's to fulfill your the it's it, it's 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 you you have to do this to fulfill the the world that you desire you know he tells him his aspirations are truly admirable like he's hyping him up big he's like yeah come on but this was so good and even Gori has the command buck one he's even just like hey you know if you uh you know you want the help you just let me know i'm on your side i got you and i'm like oh Gori's trying to do like good guy and let me help you out routine when literally last episode he's like oh no buffa's gonna do it these guys eh, but buffa's the one um we saw two um riders in this that um that they're gm riders i guess they're just dgp staff that are being controlled by glare um they've been basically hunting and stalking geats and kind of luring him towards nan and kawa the whole time and at first i was like i thought maybe they were like the bodyguards but then when you see the the, the id cores on them it's like i think one's like a rat or something like that and like no it's not them and we figure out like geats being who he is he already figured out what the game is what the rules are and even nan and him are talking about like you know nan, you know do they really have to fight is this really how it has to be we finally see punk chat who i haven't seen since the end of episode 14 and he has his regular helmet on now and he's attacking geats but you could still tell he's under glare's control he's still under control of the gm okay um and you know the whole entire time like i said we have during all this you know ky and the gm still talking gm still hyping him up but we see this weird thing where ace is about to take out punk jack with the magnum buckle and he hesitates and then punk jack runs at him and climbs on him and they pan away and you see an explosion while well, man's like in shock seeing it well they're kind of like this is well okay like i mm. um the whole thing throughout all this stuff is we're still getting that whole like sumeri and the game master back and forth type of thing like when you think about how it was in the beginning of this show and we're only 16 episodes in and her character growth and how she is and how she is stuck to the roles like she actually yelled at him because once again she's like this is against the rules and he wants to, and Gory's, his whole motivation, his whole justification, this whole entire time has really just been about freaking Ace's wish. He doesn't want Ace to be a part of the DGP staff. And he says to justify it, they need a new savior to replace Geats. And 
given so many character development and changing. We see Ace. She's taking care of him. She brings him snacks and bandages. He's tucked away in a hole. And, you know, even he says, well, now you're breaking the rules. And she's like, eh, what the GM doesn't know won't hurt him. And even she questions his wish and everything else. And finally, you know, he says he needs to know why someone like him was born. And if there's a purpose to his existence. And that his mother's the only one who knows the answer. And even he asks her, like, hey, you know Mitsumi, right? You're our predecessor. And she had the shock face. She's like, Mitsumi. And she's like, no, can't be. And we get this. She says she knows something, but she said she cannot divulge the information. And this whole time I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, I need to know what's going on. There's so, like I said, there's so many moving parts in this episode. So much story and expo exposition and, you know, plot points coming to an end. Not really, but moving forward. Like, it's one of those ones where it's like, when you think you're going to get answers, more questions are are given to you that you need to know the answer to. That you didn't know were questions you had this early on. Like I said, 16 episodes in, and I feel like we're in the 30s of a season for episode count. The pacing is too good. I don't know how we're going to continue this quality. Something is going to happen. I don't know. But, like, it's too good. Especially now we see, like, Kawa finally stepping up and being that. Like, I'm going to win. Kawa finally got his balls. And we got, like, he, like, it, it all took was, like, a conversation between him and his sister. Because he brings up seeing his parents again. And if she would want to, and she's like, no, like, you know, look, we're happy, we're healthy, that's all that matters. And he's like, no, there's so many things I would love, I want them to be a part of and see. And, you know, his sister said the one thing, dwelling on wishes that can't be granted just make you more miserable. And he's just like, it's possible that he's going to change our world. So it took his sister saying, for, you know, basically saying why these these wishes can't be granted now i'm like are we gonna get kawa to keep his current wish and win or would he modify his wish so anyone defeated by jamato because right now it's riders eliminated participants what if it was anyone and everyone defeated by jamato then his parents would be back and i'm like okay and i see where we're going with this. And we finally get one of the shout out showdowns. I didn't think we'd get this early on in the show between K1 and Geats. Or K1 A's Tycoon and Geats. You know, I, I swapped the names out a bit. Um both he, he he does take the command buckle from the game master. And we see them battling once again, both of them in the command form with just a sword. From a power standpoint, they're equals, but aces skill and everything else gives him an advantage this whole entire time and the whole fight is visually appealing parrying countering this and that and then we get the side by side when they both have enough power for them to engine into the whole twin and cannon form and the reverse so like cable's cannon twin and aces twin cannon and i'm like this is really cool i I just don't, even when they're fighting like that, it still shows Geats, even with the power, Geats just has the edge experience-wise and everything else. And even Geats brings it up. He's like, oh, you've gotten better. You know, not just stronger, but he's gotten better. And I'm just like, okay, there's that mutual, there's that respect still from Ace. Because when you look at Ace in the beginning of the show, to now, the fact that, you know, he's grown to like Kawa and Neon, even respecting Azuma, like, it's his... It, his character growth has been subtle in how he talks, not just everything else. Whereas Kawa has been, you know, always the moral compass, but it's, you know, he's now getting a little aggressive streak. So, because Ace has the upper hand, Grory shows up, changes into glare. He goes to attack, and Kawa actually counters the attack. And we find out. The whole entire time, Kawa had a plan. Kawa outsmarted the Game Master and Ace. So, the mysterious man who's Niram, 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 uh, he shows up to see firsthand that the GM is interfering in the game. 
and we this whole time we got a flashback because Nan was talking to her father again. She asked, she's like, um, since you're a sponsor, don't you, like, can't you file a complaint? Like, you're connected to the people above the GM. And then we get a flashback. We saw that when Punk Jack exploded, it wasn't from Ace's attack. It was from a self-destruct from Glare's helmet. So basically he turned Punk Jack into a Saber Man from Drag Ball Z. It was just like, hey, jump on him and explode. I mean, we saw Cybermen, they tried it all the time, never really worked. I mean, it didn't work with Chaozu tried it either. So it's like, okay, why would you waste an explosion? So we find out that Neon filed a complaint official complaint with the game producer and because the game was set up by the jam to remove ace and that's it and we find out neuron is that producer and even states it's illegal impeding impeding your own players will and will, will not go unpunished and that he even says he failed as a jam and i was like damn and once again glory's main gripe always was He's trying to protect the world from Geet's worthless wishes. And Kawa instantly lost his shit. Like, literally, he said, you know, he brings up all the participants that put their lives at risk on the line in the DGP for their wishes. And any wish worth risking your life for is respectable. And I was like, yeah. And then we get a really one-sided fight, which also looked really visual appealing with the... Uh, Tycoon, Keats, and Nago all trying to fight Glare. His little shoulder things were flying off, and they were flying around like little laser beams, which was really cool. And, you know, then all of them finally used their three major attacks to, you know, kind of fight back. And we see Ace with the twin victory kick actually lands on Glare. Doesn't defeat him, but knocks him back. But the main thing that stopped him was Nerum. Just gets in the way and stops the fight. And all he does is snap his finger. And glare dehensions back to Garori. And I'm like, what? And even as he's disappearing like an eliminated player, which I have a theory for, he says the Jamato are evolving and that he's needed to stop them. But Nerum actually says, like, you're easily replaceable as a game master. And he's gone. Then he thanks them, pick, he picks up the glare driver and walks off. And I'm like, okay. So the downside is we have no winner. The DGP this this um season was cut short. But Neon K1 Ace have qualified for priority entry into the next one, Sumeri said. And I'm just like But if there's no winner, how does the world reset back to before all the battling started? There's questions. There's so many questions and they don't answer them. Like the garden dude shows up. And he's like, oh, my fresh new fertilizer has arrived. And, it, and he even says it looks alive. And it's literally Buffa laying there. And he says, oh, maybe it's a, it's a symptom of overusing the zombie buckle. I'm like, what the hell are you adding into the plot now? Like, I don't even know anymore what's going on. Because, and, and by this point, I actually paused the episode and I'm like, okay. So, the fertilizer for the Jamato are the eliminated and defeated players. Which explains the, how we... Because the buckle, buckle is still at the buckle in the ID course. So it explains a bag full of broken ID cores. So now, I'm just like, well, if Buffa's not dead... And he even said, like, you can do some experiments. And I'm like, okay, this is intriguing. But we haven't got enough from the gardener to even know... What the hell is going on with him? Other than he's literally trying to get the Jamato to evolve and teaching them to talk and everything else. And now they can henshin. So I was like, Ugh. and then that wasn't even it. That wasn't even the end of it. Because now we have another twist at the end of the episode. Because Sumeri informs Kewa, Neon, and Ace that the DGP isn't simply a game to save the world. It's saving the world as entertainment. And she now welcomes him to our reality rider show, The Desire Grand Prix. And all these little floating cameras pop up all around the floating platform. And we see, you know, the Nirum and Nan's dad sitting there watching. 
and you know, I mean, Nan makes it, and, and I know if that like notices that you know, Nan's dad is looks entertained and pleased. Then we see some new guy also watching from a couch in another section, and they bring up like molt like another dimension, alternate alternate dimension. Also, and I'm like, you know what? I don't even know what the hell's going on. I'm watching it. I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. But now that they had, they bring in, now that another dimension was brought up, now I'm just like, okay, the gears are turning. Like, I don't know what they're trying to pull. I'm, I'm curious about it. And then the last DGP rule is that Desire Grand Prix is a reality writer show loved by its audience and sponsors. So they're doing it to entertain sponsors and the audience. Now I'm curious, is it really an alien invasion? I don't know what's going on anymore. So, yeah, I have no theories right now. I really don't. I don't have my reaction to what happened. But I have no nothing. I literally have nothing right now. I'm going to need to see the episode 17. And then I can kind of gauge what I think might happen. But as of right now, no idea. A lot going on. That's all I know. Let me know in the comments below what your theories are. Because I'm really curious. I've been in a, I'm in a few discords. Everyone's throwing out their theories. And the whole time I'm just like, I don't know. Because every time, every, most of the theories I've had have been about wishes. Who's going to win? Not. Nah. The DGP side of things. And I'm starting to see a hierarchy here. Nirim's at the top. Is the game producer. And then we have the sponsors. So the game master and navigator are pretty low. And the gardener is down there too. So. I'm wondering. Who else we're going to get. What other new characters. And if the characters we have. We can get more information on them. So I can know what's going on. I'm really enjoying it. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And yeah, that's it for the video. I will see you guys in the next one.